Another approach is universalism. Uh, universalism says that all religions are basically the same. They all lead us in the same direction. What they will say is, this is the mountain peak towards which we are all going. And some people choose the Hindu journey, so they go up the mountain peak from that side. And others will choose this side of the mountain and go up the mountain from this side. And others will choose this side of the mountain and go up the path on that side. But at the end of the day, we all arrive at the same destination, that we're all going in the same direction, universalism. So Hinduism or Buddhism or Christianity or Islam are all equally true. Why are they equally true? Because they're all going in the same direction. And eventually, we all find ourselves at the top of the mountain, embracing each other all together. We've all arrived there together. That's universalism. I, stu I studied world religions at a secular university in the United States, a quite a large, a very large university. And my professor of world religions used to say, that anyone who says that all religions are basically the same has not studied the religions. He say very dogmatically, they are not basically the same. For example, to say that the Hindu goal for us to be absorbed into the, for the person to be absorbed into the universal Brahman so that he ceases to exist as a person anymore is a, like a drop of water absorbed into the ocean. He's absorbed into the universal, but his personal identity is absolutely obliterated. It vanishes. It is no more. To say that that is the same as the Christian proclamation that God's grand plan is bodily resurrection from the dead, living eternally with God in his kingdom, to say that that is the same as the Hindu vision of the destiny uh, that, that we experience in death is just pure nonsense. They are not saying the same thing at all. To say that all religions are saying basically the same thing is a violation of what the religions teach. It just is not true. And uh, it's wishful thinking, but it is wishful thinking which has no foundation in truth whatsoever. Muslims say Jesus was not crucified what they proclaim from the Quran. To say that that is equally true to the gospel message which proclaims that Jesus was crucified and that both are equally true, they're both contradictory. They are not equally true. They cannot be equally true. Either Jesus was crucified or he was not crucified. And we can talk about that and dialogue about that, um, hear the Muslim case, but also to express the Christian case for the conviction that Jesus was crucified. To say both are equally true, both are saying the same thing, is, in my judgment, a distortion of both what Muslims proclaim and of what the Christian faith proclaims. So when we look at the religions carefully and we see the destination that they invite us to, we find it is not the same destination. That the Hindus invite us to a very different destination than the Gospel does, or that Islam does, you see. So again, a universalist approach to world religions is wishful thinking, but it is not grounded in, in uh, a serious looking at the truth and, and the, as, as taught by these different religions. They really do lead us in other directions. And again, I would say that it would be uh, Hinduism. Probably as much as any other religion that promulgates this philosophy that all religions are basically the same, taking us in the same direction. Because Hinduism says all is Brahman, all is God. And so any path that you are taking is ultimately the same path because all is Brahman. 
So this would be a, a, a philosophical religious system that would embrace that approach to the understanding of the way in, of, uh, of the function of religions and the relationship to one another. Another approach is agnosticism. And there I will choose Buddhism. As an example of agnosticism. Buddha was not sure if there's any gods or any god. Uh, he doubted it very, very much. However, he said, if someone wants to worship a god, that's up to them. They can choose to do so. That's relativism, of course. Um, but he himself never encouraged people to worship any divinity. He believed that we are our, that we are our own saviors, that there's no God to help us. Uh, we acquire our own salvation through psychological and spiritual disciplines. Uh, but there's no God at the end of the day taking our hand, as it were, and leading us into salvation. Buddha did not believe in that at all. So he would be an agnostic. An agnostic means someone who simply says, I don't know. Buddha is their creative God, his disciples may ask him. And Buddha would say, I just do not know. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Uh -huh. Confucius, the same thing. Ask Confucius, is there a creator God? And Confucius would say, I don't know. I just don't know. But I really don't think if there's a creator God that he's any help to us. I think we're on our own to work out our own political salvation without God. We don't need God to do that. That would be Confucius, you see. So the agnostic says, we just don't know. We just don't know. And I mentioned this morning about this conversation I had in a university classroom in the United States just a, couple, just a little, little over a week ago. And um, this one fellow was saying he's an agnostic. And I pled with him, don't go through life as an agnostic. The questions are too urgent, too necessary. Don't just walk through life saying, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. And so I, that's what I said to him. And he says, well, then how shall I know? I said, very simple, very simple. Ask the architect. Ask the one who put it together, you know. <laughs> the God who created didn't leave us without a witness, you know. He, he wants us to know. He doesn't just create us and abandon us. But you have to pay attention to what he says, to what God says about the meaning of life, you know. But there's an answer. There's an answer. Don't just walk around saying, I don't know, I don't know. If you don't know, it's because you haven't asked. You have not asked the architect what the answer is to that question. I was uh, in, uh, not so long ago, I was meeting with a uh, Chinese university professor. And she said that she was so, so uh, depressed because she did not know the answer to the question, why am I here? So she was an agnostic. But she knew that that was a very foolish thing to be. That it's a very important question. So she didn't just lay down and say, I don't know. She got to work. And she investigated all the philosophy she could think of. Uh, Sigmund Freud, uh, you know, uh, 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 San, uh, Skinner, uh, Darwin, all the religions, Islam, Buddhism, Confucianism, uh, Taoism and so forth and so forth. She says, I investigated all of them. I read the books, I read the books, they covered the field, everything, looking for the answer to this question, why am I here? And then one day, someone gave her a Bible. And she got to exploring that message. And she found Jesus in the Bible. And she said that was the answer. And she, she was in Beijing, China, she was a professor. She went to Hong Kong and therefore the first time in her life met some Christians. She was baptized in Hong Kong. And then with her doctorate returned to, returned to uh, China. And she was saying to me how that the word is now out in the university campus where she works, that this particular professor knows the answer to the question, why am I here? And so she said that evening after evening her apartment is filled with students coming to hear the answer to that question that they're not satisfied being agnostics. They want to know, why am I here? And do you really know the answer to that question? And she explains to them what the architect says about this, what the creator of it all says about this. And the students are so happy to have found somebody who could point them in the right direction to this 
agnost to, 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 this, to this question. Have you benefited from our teaching ministry? Have you found TVS videos helpful and relevant? Please consider supporting us with your prayers and financial gifts. For more information, visit tvsseminary.com.